Well, good day, guys. Welcome to my new man cave 2.0. Uh, this is my new flat and my new garage. The other day, I posted a thing on Instagram with my charging setup, which intrigued a few people, and then they went and asked me to do a video on it. So now I have to do this video. Thanks, guys. So what have we got? Over here, I've set up the new charging bay. Let's start with power. So for power, we have two of the HP, uh, whatever they are, 1200 something something, 100 amp power supplies. You can get a pair of those for 50 to 100 dollars landed in Australia. That's Australian dollars. Uh, off eBay. They're all second hand, they come out of server racks, which means they could drop dead at any moment, but probably won't because they're designed to last forever. So I've got two of those and they're wired up in series. And I've got this little guy here, which is a uh, from I think it's coolice.com. It's a protection circuit. So what that does is if one of these dies, suddenly it'll cut the power to the output. Um, because if one of them dies suddenly and the voltage suddenly halves and you're in the middle of charging, it can pop the eye charges. Uh, they don't like that sudden surge in current that happens. So uh, this gives me 24 volts at up to 100 amps, which is frankly insane and overkill for what we'll all need, but we like headroom. There's also a couple of 12 volt outputs here, which you can use to run LEDs and so on. I've got a whole bunch of things coming off bullet connectors in there. Uh, one of them is the iCharger 406. Uh, another one is a little XT60 to run the ISDT chargers. I'm now on my third one of these after two of them dropped dead. Thanks Banggood. Um, they're great, but uh, yeah, Banggood warranties. <laughs> sure, lol. Um, and we've got some wires going off down there into the distance to run some LED lights in what will be my working area. I'm going to put some more LED strips in there over the next week or so. So, uh, what else have we got? Apart from vintage quads here and uh, a few other bits and bobs. Uh, one important thing, battery charging station set up on something non-flammable. So I've just got some old tiles. They may or may not stop the house burning down, but they're certainly going to help if something does catch fire when I'm not there. And so is this thing, a very important device. If you do not have these in your house, those are smoke detectors, kids. Um, they can save your life installed immediately. Uh, we've got various other chargers here. 18650, Mavic, blah, blah, blah. Underneath, we've got uh, my surplus batteries. This is a Bunnings fire safe thing for documents. It's extremely heavy. Um, it's fire and flood proof, apparently. There's actually a rubber grommet that goes around here. It would be a real bad idea to make this airtight if something was catching fire inside. So I tend to leave it open. You can pull this out if you want to um, close it up and take it places but that'll contain hopefully any fire that happens to start there. It's unlikely, batteries just don't spontaneously tend to catch fire. Generally happens when you mistreat them or they're charging. This is an interesting little guy. Um, this is a discharge resistor. I got this off eBay. It is a 1000 watt, one ohm resistor. Uh, it is not rated for 1000 watts in free air. It gets way too hot. It's rated for 250 watts, but you can feed it more for short periods of time. It's basically a giant coil of wire inside filled with sand. So it gets friggin' hot. Um, you can see there's like asbestos bloody insulation on this. I've gummed it up here with um, liquid electrical tape. I was uh, going to experiment with the idea of um, keeping it in a bucket of water which would cool it off nicely. But a fan will work quite as well. Uh, in practice, I don't tend to need to use this at full power very often, but it's quite handy when you do need that um, ability to discharge something at you know, 30 amps. The reason I don't need it so often is because the iCharger will let you do a regenerative charge. So you can 
take all your packs that you haven't flown and you can feed those into all the packs that you have flown to bring them back up to storage or in this case uh, an XT90 on there that's for my e-bike battery which is huge and um, which can absorb a whole bunch of juice from your little quad batteries. So the really intriguing thing now is what's going on here. This is the Raspberry Pi and I've hooked it up um, to the 24 volts via a regulator to get down to 5 volts. These things need about 2-2.5 two, two amps so you need a decent power supply on those. I wanted to run through this because I wanted it to have a common ground and have everything sharing ground there. Uh, there is an issue you can get with these chargers with ground loop voltages and things you can blow up your Raspberry Pi if you're not careful so you have to watch that. Um, so that's just power going in. This is USB data uh, coming in from the iCharger here. This cable is special. You can't just use an ordinary USB cable with the iCharger. Um, there's well documented threads out there on the problems that people have had. They've popped their USB ports on their computers um, because of that ground loop issue. Um, the iCharger comes with a special cable which is nice except they don't tell you this and um, if you're like me and you chuck it in the box with all the other USB cables how do you know which one it is? Well it's quite easy to figure it out. Um, the ground shields are not connected so if I, this is going to be hard to do with one hand if I attempt to measure the resistance between that and that, it's an open circuit. If I do it on this one, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand. Hang on, I'm going to beep. There it is. So this is an uh, open shielded, ungrounded cable, whatever you want to call it. This is a normal USB cable. Do not use that, do use that and you'll be fine. The uh, project that all this came from is actually an open source project that some guys have been doing um, and I got onto it via a thread on RC Groups and um, it's reasonably well documented and reasonably mature but like any open source thing there is some digging around that you're going to have to do. Um, little things like that cable for example. But you just get uh, the Raspberry Pi, you flash the image onto an SD card, stick it in there and away it goes and it basically sets up a wireless network which interfaces uh, your Raspberry Pi with your local wireless network and then you can connect to your charger wirelessly which is really cool. So we'll have a look on here. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, you can see the charger's not doing anything at the moment so we've got idle and idle. You got your voltage in, milliamp hours used, and it'll give you your cell voltages and things there. You can also, and this is where it gets really nice, edit your presets. So anyone who has an eye charger knows that the user interface on these things is utterly woeful. I cannot stress how much I hate the UI on these friggin chargers. They're a brilliant bit of hardware, horrible horrible UI. After three years I still make mistakes navigating around it. You got all this stuff, oh what do I do here, I'm going to push a button there, oh how do I edit it, how do I make a new preset, I've got to do that, and then I'm going to go manage, then I've got to like go add, or just, you know, and then you end up like how do I go back, it's just not intuitive. Um, this thing's good because you can go, oh yeah, there's that one, I want to edit the name, I want to change the charge current here, do all of that stuff, hit save and off you go. The only thing it, the only thing it won't let you do ironically is create a new preset, you have to do that on the charger and then, um, and then edit it, but small price to pay, again open source, not super mature yet you get what you pay for. In this case you pay nothing.
you just have to buy a Raspberry Pi which is about 60 bucks from Little Bird Electronics and um, off you go. So uh, that's pretty much it I think. Oh one other important feature that I like you may remember this guy from certain fun videos um, have one of those handy doesn't have to be a giant CO2 one like that Trichemical will work just fine have some way of putting batteries out these tiles are also go if something catches fire I can just pick that up and take it outside anyone who's tried to carry a battery while it's on fire looking at you Todd will know that they get rather hot so um, yeah all little safety things big fat power supply good charger small charger I won't say good um, and yeah groovy little thing so I can take this upstairs now and I can monitor when my batteries are done or whether they're going if the cell voltages look really weird I'll see it straight away um, don't charge unattended but if you're going to do something silly like that do it on a flame proof surface have a smoke detector and you'll be a lot happier if something goes wrong I think that's about it yeah I could talk about parallel charging actually I will talk about that briefly um, it's not a problem if you do it right these little poly switches though you have to be careful if you trip those or partially trip them by plugging in the balance leads before the batteries have equalized then you can have some really weird things happen so always plug in the big leads first let them sit for a minute let all your batteries equalize out then plug in all the balance leads and you'll be fine and you know your batteries can be quite different in voltage despite what people say it's an equilibrium reaction so when you plug in battery with more charge will dump all of its extra electrons into the battery with less charge until they reach the same voltage and stabilize now if there's a big difference in those voltages you'll get a lot more current flowing it's not very nice to plug in an empty battery and a full battery because the empty battery will get way more above its uh, recommended C charge rating um, but if they're relatively similar it's fine or the other scenario is you have a whole bunch of batteries which are slightly lower than say a more charged battery you plug that more charged battery into a bunch of batteries that are lower and they each get a small proportion of that extra current and it's basically just like a 1C charge so let them stabilize though before you plug in any balance leads and then off you go happy flying we'll see you around bye now oh I forgot to mention um, I'm gonna put all the links for the charger project in the description so click on that thing down there click on those things this is weird I've never done one of those before are they still there yeah. click on those things if you want or the lipo gets it <laughs>